Okay, so one of the terms um, that I want to introduce is the term binary. Oops, let's move back, get my pen going here. There we are. And um, binary simply means that you have only two elements. And so far, we have worked with molecules that are binary, for example, uh, carbon dioxide. We have one element of carbon, and we have the element of oxygen, two elements. We've done um, ionic compounds, type 1, and that would be something like sodium chloride. Again, we have one element here and one element uh, over here. And I'm going to intru introduce uh, the next one, which is ionic compounds type 2. And these are actually relatively simple. Um, again, you only have two elements. And we could, we'll be working with something like uh, copper chloride. So we have copper and chloride. And I'm going to go into detail what makes these ionic compounds, the type 2, different. So back to our large white paper, we have ionic bonds, type 2, in the next column. And the key on this one is this is where the metal usually is a transition metal. So not a alkali metal or alkaline earth metal, that they're usually transition metals. And transition metals often have different numbers of oxidation numbers. Okay, and in the next slide, we're going to go through exactly one of those. So the key in all of this is that if you can make sure you turn to page 90 in your textbook and look at table 4.2, you will always have this table, uh, better said, you will often have this table with you. And if you look at table 4.2, you're going to see iron, copper, cobalt, tin, lead, and mercury. And next to them, they either have the ion of plus 3 or plus 2, some cases plus 4, okay? And because we never exactly know um, if it has an oxidation number of plus 1 or plus 2, we have to sort of do it in an indirect way. So we'll start off with an example. So let's do cobalt uh, chloride. Okay, so first of all, the easy part is naming them. In this case, we know that chlorine from our periodic table has an oxidation number of negative 1. And I always like to write those above. All right, remember our oxidation numbers always have to equal 0. And in this case, we have 3 of them. So. That means we have three negative ones, which means that we have a negative three charge. That would mean, for cobalt, uh, that would mean that in order to get that zero right over here, cobalt has to have an oxidation number of positive three, all right? So when we name this, we actually tell you, you tell the oxidation name because cobalt can come in two forms. If you look at that table, it can come as cobalt 2, and we do that by Roman numerals with parentheses, which has an oxidation number of plus 2, or it can come as cobalt 3, which has an oxidation of number 3. So which of these cobalts is it? Is it cobalt 2 or 3? Well, because we know that chlorine, these chlorines with the three of them have 
a negative three charge, in order for that to equal zero, cobalt has to be a plus three charge. So we say cobalt, then we use the three here, cobalt three, chloride. And remember, you always have that end, okay? So that makes it cobalt three chloride. So I'll give you a second to look at that and we're going to try another one. Let me clear the screen. All right, let's do this one. We have copper and then iodine. So how would you name that? And I always say start with non-metal first because that one you always know the oxidation number for. So let's go ahead and ha I'm going to have you start working through this on your sheet of paper and then I'll just check in with you. So for iodine I hope all of you realized okay that has a negative one charge because of that oxidation number. Next go to table 4.2 on page 90 and see, is it going to be copper one or copper two that you're going to have bond with this iodide? Remember, it has to equal zero. So good, I hope most people real, realize that it was going to be copper one. Iodite is how you would say it. All right, iodide. Iodide, my apologies, a D here. Wrong. Copper one iodide. And the reason I know it was one and not two because copper one has a positive one charge plus one minus one equals zero. All right. So, um, I'd like you to look, oh, I, let's now work the opposite way. The opposite way is actually sometimes a little bit easier. Let's say I have the term mercury to chloride. Okay, so in this case, we know that mercury has a plus two charge because of this two right here. Mercury two always has a plus two charge. Remember we need to have it equal to zero. Next thing is I know that chloride has a negative one charge because it's a halogen and all halogens have an oxidation number of negative one. So we have that. So what do we need to do to make sure that that equals zero? Well. If I have one mercury that has a plus two charge, I have, at this point, one chlorine that has a minus one charge, that's not gonna get me to a zero. But if I give it another chlorine, so that I have now two chlorines that have a negative one charge, making this to be a negative two, um, pl two plus n negative two does equal zero. So for that reason, I know that it is mercury, which has HG as its uh, chemical symbol, Cl2. And remember that two comes because you need to have two negative charges to equal zero. Okay, let's practice one and see if that works out for you. And I'm going to do tin. for bromide. Go ahead and work through that one. So in this case, you always start with the actual metal. We know that this has a plus four charge. We know we have to get to zero. Bromide, you look, and you notice, okay, it's a halogen, so that must mean it has a negative one charge. How many negative one charges do we need, or how many bromides do we need,
to make sure that that end charge equals zero. And I hope most people said four, and you're absolutely right. For that reason, we write tin, and remember tin is an unusual one. It is SN, BR, in this case, four. And there's your answer. All right, that should do it. Thanks.